Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Rajni Arora, Associate Professor in Zoology, Swami Shradhanand College, University of Delhi. I will be speaking on the module of the immunology paper that is antigen recognition by immune cells where the main focus is on recognition units of B and T cells that is BCR, TCR, co-receptors and properties of antigens recognized by B and T lymphocytes. The study of this chapter will help you to understand the fact, concept and function of the receptor, the difference of a receptor from co-receptor, recognition unit of B and T lymphocytes, structure of B cell receptor or BCR, structure of T cell receptor or TCR, role of BCR, TCR and co-receptors in antigen recognition, the properties of antigens recognized by B and T lymphocytes, the structure and role of CD4 and CD8 in T cell activation. As you all know, the immune system is designated to recognize and respond to variety of pathogens by two ways that is innate and adaptive. The adaptive mechanism is more specific and has diversity in recognition and response compared to innate. This specificity is due to the receptors present on B and T lymphocytes. In fact, there is a set of complete recognition unit or a complex on these cell membranes. Now, BCR recognition is on the exogenous antigen, but TCR recognizes the endogenous antigen, which is complexed with MHC molecule or major histocompatibility complex present on the membranes of all the nucleated cells or the APC that is the antigen presenting cell. Both the TCR and BCR are diverse molecules. The recognition unit is a complex of receptors and co-receptors acting as transducers and enhancers to improve the binding ability with the antigen finally resulting in lymphocyte activation. It consists of BCR, TCR, co-receptors and other accessory molecules. Recognition and response of B and T lymphocytes is very different. The B cells after recognizing the exogenous antigen are activated and respond by multiplying finally producing the antibodies by the plasma cells. The functions of the antibodies I assume you all know very well. TC or T cytotoxic cells recognize the antigen complexed with MHC1 and respond by killing the target cell releasing various cytotoxic granules on activation. The T helper cells recognize the antigen which is complexed with MHC2 molecule located on APC. After recognizing the antigen, they release cytokines, the nature of which determines the activation of B or T lymphocytes. The recognition and effector function of the three types of lymphocytes, that is the B lymphocytes, where the BCR plus antigen results in the antibody production, the cytotoxic T lymphocytes in complex with the MHC1 and the peptides that is a processed antigen results in the cell killing whereas the TCR of the T helper cell plus the processed peptide and MHC1 results in the lymphocyte activation which means the activation of the B as well as the T lymphocytes and also the macrophage activation and inflammation. Before we start understanding the structure of BCR 
and TCR and other components of the recognition unit of lymphocyte, we must know what is a receptor and its structure. A receptor is a membrane molecule for binding with any chemical, antigen, hormones or neurotransmitters etc. It has three components, the extracellular domain for recognition and binding with the ligand which here means an antigen or immunogen. Transmembrane component to carry the information through the plasma membrane. Intracellular or cytoplasmic tail for signal transduction. It is the structure of a receptor that is extracytoplasmic that is outside the plasma membrane, transmembrane that is passing through the plasma membrane and intracytoplasmic or cytoplasmic which is represented as I. Dear students, it is very interesting to know that cells they convey the outside information to its interior by bringing the conformation change on the receptors resulting in either opening of certain ionic channels or by activation of certain cell enzymes by kinases. A receptor can take the help of a co-receptor also if the cytoplasmic component is short so as to deliver the message to the cell interior. The binding of the ligand can bring certain change in the ionic channels as in the diagram you see that there is opening of the ionic channels for movement of certain ions that is you see the calcium. It is showing the receptor ligand interaction which may result in a biological response that means once the ligand it binds with the receptor protein there is a slight conformation change in the receptor protein which may result in a biological response. CD4 and CD8 are the co-receptors of T helper and T cytotoxic cell. Receptor ligand interaction may bring the conformation change on their receptor resulting in biological response by signal transduction which in lymphocytes results in their activation that is clonal proliferation of the cells. A co-receptor co is in fact a cell surface receptor that binds a signaling molecule in addition to primary receptor in order to facilitate ligand recognition and initiate the biological processes as on the entry of the pathogen into the host cell. Signal transduction also known as cell signaling is the transmission of the molecular signals from the cell's exterior to its interior and this step is initiated by the surface receptors and in the lymphocytes it is the BCR and the TCR units. So in this module we will focus on their structure. Let us now study the details of the recognition unit of B cells. It has two components. It is in fact made of membrane antibody and alpha beta heterodimer. Membrane antibody acts as a receptor but it cannot transmit the signal to cell cytoplasm for B cell activation due to its small cytoplasmic tail. Membrane antibody is different from the secretory due to the peptide chain in the FC component to anchor on the plasma membrane of B cells. Structure of a BCR and a TCR. BCR means B cell receptor and TCR is T cell receptor. BCR showing the membrane antibody which is a Y-shaped structure of an antibody having the FAB and the FC fragments. The FAB fragment is showing the antigen binding site whereas the FC fragment that is the heavy chain of the FC fragments is having a cytoplasmic tail so as to anchor into the plasma membrane. The heavy chains they are bind with each other with the disulfide bridges. You see the antigen receptors on the T cell 
which is called TCR and it is a peptide dimer, dimer you can say having the variable as well as the constant domains. It is a dimer of two different types of peptide chains which are called the alpha and the beta chain. So it is a heterodimer. It also has a cytoplasmic component that is a cytoplasmic tail part which helps it into anchoring into the plasma membrane and entering to the cytoplasm of the lymphocyte. Alpha beta heterodimers are important as they are having long cytoplasmic tail to interact with intracellular signal molecules. They were first discovered by Michael Reth in 1990. Alpha chain has 61 amino acid and beta has 41 acids in the peptide chain. They interact with the BCR on the lipid wraps of the plasma membrane and they have ITAM or immunotyrosine based activation motifs on the tail part so as to activate the tyrosine kinase enzymes. Shows the clear diagram of a B cell receptor which is not only made up of membrane antibody it also has Ig alpha and Ig beta peptide chains. The membrane antibody is having the BCR recognition component. It also has the heavy chain which has a small cytoplasmic tail. The tail of the heavy chain helps to anchor into the plasma membrane and since the cytoplasmic tail is small, it cannot deliver the signal into the cell interior. It requires Ig alpha and Ig beta which have long cytoplasmic tails and you can see it also has ITAM which helps to signal transduction whenever there is a BCR uh, antigen recognition at the fab fragments of the membrane antibody. And it is basically the cell signaling which helps in activating the B lymphocyte. Similarly here you see the T cell receptor which I will be discussing. The T cell receptor is also having a alpha as well as a beta peptide chains but you see the cytoplasmic tails of these uh, chains they are small but they are having TCR recognition units, TCR recognition sites. So along with it, it requires certain CD3 molecules as well as you will see it also requires certain uh, CD4 as well as the CD8 uh, co-receptors with them. And you see the CD3, it is made up of the zeta chains, the gamma, the delta, the epsilon. But you see very carefully the zeta chain, it is having a very small site, extra uh, cellular component, but it is having a very long cytoplasmic tail. In fact, the cytoplasmic tail of zeta chain, it is having three ITAM compared to one in other four chains which you see uh, that is the epsilon, the delta and the gamma chains of the CD3 components. Let me mention here that tyrosine kinases are a subclass of protein kinases, an enzyme that can transfer a phosphate group from ATP to a protein in a cell. It functions as an on or off switch in many cellular activities. The phosphate group is attached to the amino acid tyrosine on the protein. Spleen tyrosine kinases also known as SYK is an enzyme which in humans is encoded by SYK gene and is important in signal transduction in both the B and T lymphocytes. There is also an enzyme LYK with similar functions. What is the sequence of steps of antigen recognition and signal transduction so as to activate a lymphocyte? It is very clear from this flow diagram where in a flow diagram you are able to see how the antigen is being recognized by the membrane antibody and the antibody once it has recognized a multivalent antigen there is BCR antigen clustering and once this clustering has occurred, the information is conveyed to the signal molecule on the alpha beta heterodimers which we have discussed earlier. These alpha beta 
heterodimers they bear ITAM which are responsible for the activation of tyrosine kinases and number of the cell enzymes and this results in the activation of the B cells. This clearly shows how the antigen binding results in clustering of the antibody and activation of SYK like kinases which are present on the tail end of that is the cytoplasmic component of alpha and beta heterodimer which is attached to the membrane antibody. First when the antigen is not bound to the antigen recognition site of the membrane antibody there are present inactive SYK kinases shown in the tail component of the alpha and the beta part of the heterodimer. But once the antigen it, it binds with the B cell receptors the two membrane antibodies results in the clustering of these membrane antibodies as a result of it there is an activation of SYK like kinases and once this activation has occurred as you all know the kinases results in the phosphorylase activation enzymes and it the signal it passes downstream as a result of it number of the biological activities will begin inside the B lymphocyte and it will result in the B lymphocyte activation. BCR antigen clustering is very important step for antigen recognition and this is possible by the multivalent antigens. BCR recognizes epitopes with the properties as identical or non-identical meaning thereby that they are identical in their chemical structure repeating or non-repeating epitopes which means regular spaced identical epitopes or of the different types overlapping or non-overlapping where overlapping means the epitopes are very closely spaced and conformational or non-conformational which means three dimensional and the linear epitopes these epitope properties are important for BCR antigen clustering. Antigen antibody interactions involve four types of bonds or the forces between the antigenic determinants or epitope and paratope of the antibody. They are hydrogen bonds, van der Waal forces, ionic and the hydrophobic bonds. By now it should be very clear about the structure of BCR unit and that the antigen recognition is very important step for B cell activation and their specific response. There are certain small molecules which bind with the BCR but cannot elicit the response and they are called heptons. They need a carrier protein for eliciting the immune response. Once they bind with the carrier say BSA they become immunogenic in nature shows how a hapton is a small molecule it can bind with the membrane antibody but it cannot activate the b cell but this hapton when it binds with a bigger protein say a carrier protein like bsa bsa you all know is bovine serum albumin and when this con is conjugated with the bsa it becomes an immunogen when we say it becomes an immunogen that means it is able to elicit an immune response that means once the foreign antigen is this is recognized in combination with the carrier protein it the signal it will pass the signal to the b cell and the b cell activation will occur now coming to the second type of the lymphocyte that is t cell t lymphocytes recognize endogenous antigen by the receptors called tcr or T cell receptors. It is membrane bound and not at all secretory in nature like BCR. It cannot recognize a free antigen like BCR. A complete recognition unit of T cell or TCR is complex consisting of the following important components that is the two alpha and beta or gamma and delta peptide chains expressed on the surface of the T lymphocyte as TCR. The number of the T cells with gamma delta receptor is less 
compared to the alpha and beta. The gamma delta T cells do not require MSC molecules and they have the affinity for the non-peptide antigens. CD3 complex or invariant chain consisting of gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta and eta peptide chains. Co-receptor molecule is either CD4 or CD8 based on their ability to respond to the peptide MHC complex and their role in the signal transduction. TCR is a highly variable heterodimer which has two functionally different domains that is variable and a constant. The variable domain is responsible for antigen recognition and binding but the constant domain is transmembrane with a small cytoplasmic tail to interact with the CD3 molecule. The TCR that is the T cell receptor you all know the three components of that that is the extra cytoplasmic transmembrane and the small cytoplasmic tail is there but in the extra cytoplasmic component of both the alpha and the beta chains you will see that there is a variable component and there is a constant component the antigen it forms a complex here with a variable component of the alpha and the beta chain and this is it is due to this variable component that it shows the molecular diversity. CD3 complex chains are called invariant as they have no variability in their amino acid sequence. It has three types of heterodimers of gamma delta, gamma epsilon, delta epsilon and one homodimer of zeta chains. Zeta chains are having very long cytoplasmic tail with 113 amino acids. Cytoplasmic tail component of CD3 also have ITAM as present in the BCR recognition units. They are tyrosine based activation motifs which activate the enzymes tyrosine kinases for T cells. There are three ITAM on zeta and one each on delta, eta and gamma chains of CD3 molecule. The recognition of antigen by T lymphocyte results in a signal transduction via reversible phosphorylation of tyrosine by protein kinases and phosphatases. T lymphocytes also use kinases in signaling to phosphorylate ITAM located on CD3 and zeta chains. The CD4 and CD8 co-receptors they act as enhancers which increase the affinity of TCR with the MHC1 or MHC2 molecules. They bind to the conserved regions of the MHC molecules. CD4 is a co-receptor for T helper cell which binds with the MHC of APC whereas CD8 binds with the MHC molecule exhibited on all the nucleated cells. Where there is a combination of TCR with the processed antigen which is loaded on the MHC complex along with CD3 and CD8 molecules. So it is not only the single attachment of this processed antigen with the TCR, it is a complete assembly of the TCR with the MHC molecule which you all know is major histocompatibility complex along with CD3 and CD8. The interaction of the T helper cell with the antigenic peptide and the antigenic peptide interaction in the T killer cell or the T cytotoxic cell. As you all know there are two types of the T lymphocytes. One is the T helper cell. The T helper cell can recognize the antigen which is loaded on the MHC2 molecule of antigen presenting cell along with the co-receptor CD4. Unlike that of the TC cell or the killer cell which can form a complex of the antigenic peptide with MHC1 which is loaded on maybe all the nucleated cell and here an infected cell which is able to display this antigenic peptide on the MHC1 it is being recognized by the T cell receptor or TCR present on the TC cell and along with it 
a co-receptor that is called the CD8 protein. T lymphocytes with CD8 surface glycoproteins are called CD8 positive T cells and those with CD4 are called CD4 positive T cells. CD4 is a 55 kilo delton glycoprotein expressed on approximately 5 to 6 percent of T cells in human. It is a single peptide alpha monomer which is linked to tyrosine kinase in the cell membrane. It consists of four extra cellular domains in the peptide chain. It is the important receptor for the entry of HIV that is human immunodeficiency virus which causes a deadly disease AIDS that is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. CD4 count is an important lab test which is done on the AIDS victim indicating the health of the patients. The cells with CD4 glycoproteins are more prone to attack by HIV. CD8 is a 34 kilodalton alpha beta heterodimer both with extracellular transmembrane and the cytoplasmic domains. It is present on 30% of T cells in the blood of human and it has one extracellular domain and is also associated with tyrosine kinases in the cytoplasm. The extracellular domain of CD8 alpha interacts with the alpha 3 domain of MHC1 molecule which helps in increasing its sensitivity and stabilizing the TCR and MHC interface required for cell activation. The structure of the co-receptors CD4 and CD8. CD4 is located as you know we have discussed many times it is located on the T helper cell and it is a monomer with a variable domains and it is having the extra cytoplasmic transmembrane and the cytoplasmic tail. The N terminal is extra cytoplasmic whereas the tail part is cytoplasmic in nature and is a C terminal uh, in fact whereas the CD8 it is made up of the two polypeptide chains that is it is a heterodimer and it is made up of alpha and beta chains and these alpha and beta chains are having the N terminal which is outside the plasma membrane of the cell whereas the C terminal is in the cytoplasmic component of the cell. I must mention that the regulatory mechanism for weakening or attenuation of the human immune receptor signaling is important so as to prevent the reactions for self antigens and it is by certain inhibitory peptides or the receptors which are located on T and B cells which have ITIM that is immune tyrosine inhibitory motifs so as to activate the phosphatases rather than kinases. The antigens recognized by T cells are small linear peptides located on MHC1 or MHC2. They identify the protein antigens which are processed and thus broken into small peptides. The reason that only proteins are recognized is the ability of the peptide compatible structure of the MHC. MHC molecules show polymorphism and have the ability to bind with the variety of the peptides. Out of the large repertoire of the MHC molecule, the T cells recognize the peptide which is complexed with the MHC molecule and this is called MHC restriction. Let us now list some of the antigen recognition properties by T cells and B cell. The interaction with antigen and T cell receptor forms a ternary complex that is antigen, MHC and antibody. The T cells do not bind the soluble antigen. The T cells require MHC molecule for presentation of the processed antigens. The T cells recognize the antigens which are mostly protein in nature. The epitopes recognized by the T cells are the linear peptides 
due to the processing of the antigens and are bound to the MHC molecule. The recognition of B cell epitopes of antigen has following features that is the interaction of B cells with the epitopes form a binary complex that is antigen antibody. B cells bind with soluble antigens. B cells do not require MHC molecules for epitope recognition. B cells recognize the wide range of the antigens which may be proteins, polysaccharides and lipids in nature. They recognize the epitopes which are accessible hydrophilic mobile epitopes with the sequential or non-sequential amino acids. Thus, there is a difference in the recognition assembly of B and T lymphocytes in their structure, in the recognition properties, in the genes which code them and in their co-receptors. I conclude here and thank you dear students for listening to my presentation and hope you understood the content and enjoyed the talk. Thank you.